The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. Judith Pemberton Bennett is an ICT consultant. Today, two teachers have agreed to let Judith watch their lessons to see how they are using ICT to teach powerful verbs. With literacy and IT, we're all keen to get IT into literacy. We have to be careful we're not just replacing paper and pencil with electronic versions of it. You really want to be looking at what does this really add to the literacy lesson? How does this make the literacy lesson better? How does this take the children's learning on further than it would have done if I'd used a paper and pencil method? Judith's expertise will hopefully give the teachers some new ideas and help develop their approach to using ICT in teaching literacy. At Holymead Primary in Bristol, Year 4 teacher Melody Gibson is just getting used to her new whiteboard. At this, the amp said that he could dance all winter too. The interactive whiteboard came in um, September and the children have responded really enthusiastically to it. Um, just the idea of getting involved is really motivating. At Raxall Primary in North Somerset, years three and four teacher Ruth Jones is using an overhead projector and linked computers in the school's IT suite. You may play outside, but stay in the meadow. I've got a class of 23 boys, so they're quite lively. And um, because I can work at the front of the classroom, working on the board or with the OHP, and then moving back to the computers, the variety helps them to stay on task. Was very capable. Both teachers start the lesson at the front of the Just class. Like any other little girl or boy. OK, before we go any further, who can tell me what sort of text they think this is. I like to use fairy tales, nursery rhymes, things that the children are familiar with because they can anticipate what's going to come next. So it's not challenging their reading skills and it's allowing them then to meet the objective. Say, what word could we use instead of say? Everyday Goldilocks mother would. Sammy. Suggest. Suggest. That's a lovely word. Well done. Every day Goldilocks mother would suggest you may play outside. Okay. This is Ruth um, doing the introduction to the lesson where she's using the overhead projector so that they can all see the text. It's all a nice big size. It's all easy for them to read. And the danger when you use IT, if you're not careful, is the children become passive. They become watching what's going on rather than interacting with what's going on. So IT is a wonderful tool and adds lots of things and can engage and enthuse the children enormously. But if you're not careful, sometimes teachers' lack of confidence with the computers, that often happens, that they feel that they need to control it from the front. And so they're busy interacting with the, the, what's going on and forgetting that the children are just sitting, watching. And it can become quite a long time sitting, watching. And in fact, in Ruth's lesson, the children were sitting for about half an hour which is a very long time for children to just sit and watch something going unfolding in front of them. So we need to intersperse it with activities to get them talking, to get them thinking, to get them moving, uh, as well as just using the IT. Melody has written up a simple fable on her board and early on is asking the children to identify the verbs. Come on then, Amelia. Okay, don't press the red button, just kick it down. Well, when we actually identify um, the verbs that we're going to change, um, I actually ask the children to come out and, with my magic pen, <laughs> we, we actually highlight the, the text on the interactive whiteboard, and, um, which really motivates children because they're actually, they actually become part of the lesson, so they all want to join in. Well done. At this, the aunt said... The children are all really keen to do it. They love the idea of touching an interactive whiteboard. However, we've only got one child doing that. We've got to wait for him to come up and, you know, come up and use it. You need to remember to still use all of those good techniques you were using before you had an interactive whiteboard, before you had a projector. So use your response partners, use your whiteboards, use holding up things. Get the other children involved while one child's coming up to find the words. Maybe the other children can be writing down the words, the verbs that they can see, so that they're all involved in it. One, two, three. 
Ruth has now gathered the children around the computers to give a PowerPoint presentation. How can you improve your writing? Said, went, who can read that one for me? Courtney, got. got. And before you tell me, Mrs Smith, we can improve our writing because we all use those words all the time. I know you use those words all the time and this is how to stop using them and to improve your work, okay? So let's have a look. PowerPoint was lovely. She obviously feels very confident using PowerPoint and she put together a really nice presentation, which meant that you'd got a mixture of pictures and sound and movement, which hit all the learning styles. And you could see the children's faces light up when they were looking at the computer. They were really into it. Now, I know some teachers are going to say, I don't have time to prepare that. I don't have enough life left to prepare that. But, you know, it would be interesting to ask Ruth how long it took her to put that together. My guess is not probably very long. One autumn day, as some ants were busily getting corn for the winter, instead of getting, what could they be doing? What word could we use to make it a little bit more interesting? Jessica. Gathering. Good girl, that's a good one. Gathering. What she's doing here is she's, it's very good from a literacy point of view. She's showing the children how they could go through their own piece of work and edit it to improve it. Um, lots of children don't like doing this because they don't like to see it all rough. Um, but the advantage to uh, an IT piece of text is that you could actually put, slot in nicely written words. But she's showing them you cross out the said, you cross out the walked, and you put in more powerful verbs and it improves the piece of work. And the children, children can see all together how that makes it better. That's really good. Thanks, Bailey. Ah, he said. What she needs to do is have uh, her computer or her laptop perhaps at right angles to the board so she can see the children, what they're doing, and she can see the board. And she could type in the words and then she could move the words. And the children can ha then have a conversation about which is the best word. And she can take lots of words because what she did there was perhaps just take one word for each space from the children. Ruth and Melody now divide up their classes to do group work. Everybody clear on what you're going to do. You're going to improve your text that's on the computer, okay? Replacing those words like got and said and went with more powerful verbs, okay? Right, if you can turn around and where we are. This is one of the reasons why I like working with the suite because if you deliver a lesson through um, the interactive whiteboard, while they see ICT, they haven't got the hands on. Okay. Whereas in my lesson, in the 20 minutes, what they're going to be doing is working at these computers, and because they're going to be sat there with the support, they'll actually be achieving their objective through um, actually, you know, typing on the keyboard and developing their discrete ICT skills as well. First, she got. 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 Um, first, she. Right, so this is nice. The children have come up with the, the Goldilocks is gobbling the gold, uh, bowl of porridge and now they're going to find the next word which is got and they're having a conversation about what's the best word to put in there. They're not just putting the first word and because they're having that conversation it's raising the activity which is really rather nice and they're also reading it together. One thing I would say when you set this up maybe to say to the children is take it in terms, one word, because obviously he who has the mouse has the power. Which one, where have you deleted it from? Have you deleted uh, one, there. have you? From it in says, here? Porridge isn't too hot. Suggest it. So what you need to do is move your cursor back down to here. And what does suggested begin with? This is Laura, the learning support worker, um, and she's coming up to help the children. Um, she's really nice in the way she helps them. She isn't just saying, click that, click that. Um, she's helping the children to learn and to remember how to do it by saying, you know, can you remember which icon to click? Can you remember what it is? How about trying to right click? So it was, it was very nice intervention there and that helped those children to move on with both their IT skills and their literacy skills. Suggested the correct spelling, well done. So you managed to do that without my help then, didn't you? While most of Melody's class gets on with changing verbs on paper, her support group join her at the interactive whiteboard. When? I find a word with my little spotlight. I'm going to ask one of you to act it out. Do you understand? There's different words to use instead of walked. Oh, 
does that say? Anybody? She's got a really nice piece of software on this particular board. It's not on all boards, but on this one that she's got. It's called a spotlight facility, which allows her to put a, a screen over the words that she's typed in. And then with the pen, she can move a window and actually discover where the words are. And you can see the children are really enthused and engaged by that. Um, it also helps, what she's doing is, she's helping them with their reading strategies. So she's just showing them the beginning of the word, so they're sounding out the beginning of the word uh, and, and working through the words like that. And these, it means that these children could be successful in the activity. They wouldn't be successful sitting on their own doing this, probably. Right, you're gonna show us what strolling looks like. Go on then. Strolling, very casual strolling along. Right, thank you very much. Very good. Okay, see if we can find any more. She began to combine some methods here. She had different words for walked underneath the screen and she was asking the children to act out what, how they thought that, that word would look like. So that was quite nice because again it got them up because they've been sitting watching the text at the beginning so it got them moving and particularly these children in the support group they find concentrating quite difficult so it was quite nice to have them moving around and doing different things. Marched. 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 Well done. Okay right let's, let's have someone doing march then. Go on then, Emma. Oh, that's easy. Good girl, that's a really good march. Well done, okay. Can everybody stop and look this way, please? What I want you to do is open up, when you've saved your work that you'll do now, I want you to open up a new Word document. And using text and graphics, you can use clip art or images from the internet wherever you need to. I want you to create a poster to suggest more powerful verbs for the word look. Well, I don't know, you might want to use something like word art, put look in the middle, you know how to move it around, and then think of the other words that you could use instead of the word look. The activity that she had where the children were creating a poster with look words, that you could see immediately the children really wanted to get on with that. And that actually activity might have been a bit more open-ended and more creative for the more able if she'd used that from the very beginning. There is a tendency with teachers to say they've all got to do the same thing. Because again, when Literacy Hour first started, we all had this idea that we had one activity that circused around the groups over the five days. We've moved on from that now. What you need to do is give the activity that is suitable for each group of children. It won't necessarily be the same. So there was nothing wrong with that activity for one of the groups, but maybe the more able could have been challenged and more open-ended with their task. Both lessons are now drawing to a close. So does Judith think Ruth and Melody have succeeded in their objectives? They both had a clear literacy objective. They didn't mix it up and have an IT objective because that can happen sometimes. Um, but thinking about how I can make this lesson more creative, how I can make this lesson engage the children, how I can give the children a, a wider audience for their work. Boys in particular need a reason for doing it. If you give them a paper and pencil, slot in these words, why? Why am I putting in new words? What's in it for me, really? But if we're going to be doing it, we're going to be creating my own character, or I'm going to be drawing a picture to go with my character, or I'm going to be showing my class, you give them a reason for doing it. And IT gives you an audience straight away. So think about how you can use IT to really expand the lesson to something bigger than it would otherwise have been. Essential education projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.